Armenian refugees from Iran have been living here in the yard of the vicarage in Schwordorf, Austria, for the last six months. They are scared and don't want to appear in front of the camera. Religious troubles have driven them from their homeland, and at present they share their living space with another dozen Christian Iranians also living here. They want to escape even further to the USA and already have the necessary permits. They are just waiting for the airline tickets. Gerard Gari is a minister in Schwordorf near Vienna. He took the Armenians in and his parish supports the families. The opportunity for education for these refugees was, to a large degree, limited by their religion. They are not persecuted directly for their faith, but they are hugely disadvantaged by it. It starts from childhood and education to the opportunity to gain work. It is also difficult to get into the military. One of our boys wanted to join the military, but he had no chance. I heard in conversation that they endured this for 21 years in Tehran. They were really unhappy, and they tried, and they tried, and they tried again. But in the meantime, it was decided that they would have to go to America. Over the yard of the ministry, the jets of an aeroplane at the closed Swichat airport roar. It is a flight into Iran. Minister Gari wants to see the country for himself. Together with the Archbishop of Vienna, Gari is on his way to Iran. For the first time since the Islamic Revolution, a Roman Catholic cardinal is visiting the state of the Ayatollahs. The Armenians have lived happily in Isfaran for over 400 years. Then, the bishop was responsible for the entire region as far as India. But the Armenian life is dying. 10,000 Christians have left the country since the Islamic Revolution. I myself come from Beirut. I am a Lebanese Armenian. As a Christian, we've lived with our Muslim brothers in Lebanon for decades, I mean, for, for centuries, and for Iranians uh, here, Armenians in Iran. There's a mutual respect for Christians to respect Islam, and the respect is mutual. The Muslims have great respect for their religion. And uh, of course, the Armenians have local customs. They eat the same food. They have uh, uh, local uh, traditions. The dominance of Islam is clear. The tiny Christian minorities in Iran suffers from social isolation and disadvantage. Nevertheless, the situation has improved slightly in Tehran. It was still uncommon a few years ago for a woman to be able to shop here alone. Step by step, the Iranian society has battled to regain liberties. Two-thirds of the almost 70 million inhabitants of Iran grew up after the revolution. And in the cities, the pressure is now on for liberalization. However, conservative forces are trying to resist this. In this uneasy atmosphere, the attendance of a Catholic dignitary at a fundamentalist Islamic university comes as an important signal. Cardinal Schoenborn gives a lecture at the Tehran Imam Sadir University. Questions such as the relation between state and religion here hold not only an academic but also a political meaning. In Iran, the sciences and arts are subordinate to Islamic beliefs. If the Viennese Archbishop were to claim that economics, politics or medicine have their own value beyond the religious, then he would be branded an infidel. Sunday Mass at the Syrian church in Tehran. Prayers and hymns are sung in the ancient language used by Jesus, Aramaic. It seems that Christians in Iran are not directly persecuted because of their faith, but the bad economic situation in Iran has led to some discrimination, and so those who can leave the country. 
It is possible that in this area there is discrimination in scholastic and professional life. But there is no real persecution. We must not forget that they may have difficulties to overcome, but in comparison to other Islamic countries, I think that the difficulties are not so bad as we often think in the West. Tehran, in this city of 14 million people, at the foot of the mighty Elbrus Mountains, the relative liberalization of the Iranian religious state is perceptible. But each step forward has also had to be fought for. Small liberties are tolerated, but are not legally secured. One and a half hours by car from Tehran, wealthy Iranians enjoy an exclusive pleasure, skiing. On the piste, these small liberties become visible. Men and women are not forced to ski separately. To provide some religious justification for such pleasure, messages from the Ayatollahs are displayed on placards throughout the resort. In the Schwarzkopf village, the stories of the refugees here and the experiences in Iran are hard to reconcile. It's a very difficult situation. I mean, you have to see both points of view. On one side, there's this mass influx of immigrants, people who do not really need to be supported, so you do have to be careful. On the other hand, there are these individual cases when you consider that these people came with nothing from Armenia, traveling the whole length of Europe, then you do have to consider their futures and offer them concrete help.